let me take this opportunity to welcome each one of us in this place and we want to welcome our viewers wherever you are viewing us from. We welcome you to our morning devotion this morning. We continue worshiping the Lord together as we devote our hearts and souls and our minds and we know God is going to bless us. As we take off the program, we let us have our first hymn, number 64. What a friend of young.
Father, we have seen us before thee. How we pray that you sanctify us with your precious blood, O God. May you redeem us again, O Jehovah, that we may be worthy to stand before thee this morning. We pray that, Lord, you sanctify this sanctuary as we praise you, as we sing, as we even hear from you, O God. May you change our lives. Forgive our families, Jehovah God, wherever they are. Father, may you walk with them. Forgive our leaders, Jehovah Father, that they may know who you are and even follow you. We also want to pray that Lord forgive our country, those that lead this country, those that are led, Father, may you forgive them. Thank you for the Father that you have taken us, O God. You have seen us through difficult times, and Lord, you have kept your promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. I will pray that, Lord, you continue working with us. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the peace that we enjoy in this country, O oh God. Thank you even for the privilege to worship you again in the churches of Jehovah. We believe that, Lord, all through you have been with us, and even now, Father, as we continue to worship you, you shall walk with us. We thank you. We give you glory and honor. And our Jehovah God, we have gone through many problems, but you have always been with us. We pray that, Lord, you continue providing for the needs of Jehovah. We know that things are not good because of the diseases. But, Lord, we believe that when we walk with you, all will be possible, Jehovah. We pray that, Lord, you protect all the families that are going to stress, all the families that are sick and loved ones who have passed away, O God, we pray that the Lord will strengthen them. May you stretch your healing hand upon each and every person who is sick at this time, O Jehovah. We thank you because you have always healed, O Jehovah God. You are a great physician. And we believe that no diseases are bad in Jehovah. Thank you, Father, because we are going to protect even those that are called by your name because you have given us a promise, O oh Jehovah, that we shall continue protecting each and every person who is called by your name. May you protect this nation. May you protect other nations, O oh Jehovah. Wherever people are gathered this day to worship you, I will pray that the power of the Holy Spirit shall move in a special way and minister in their hearts. May those who have not known you turn to you, O oh God, and worship you the only living God. We thank you, Jehovah. We give you glory and honor. We know that our children are at home because the schools closed. Father, we know that your plans are good for each one of us. And we want to trust you that, Father, there is no time lost and our children will go back to school when time is good for them to go. And every day to run smoothly, Jehovah, because you plan for each one of us. Thank you, because we are mighty, we are worthy of glory. May you walk with us, even as you minister to our hearts this morning. We pray that the power of the Holy Spirit of minister to each one of us shall move in a special way and even continue to teach us. Lord, we pray that you teach us thy ways so that we may walk. Them. Let us not walk in our own wisdom, Jehovah, but we will be guided by you so that we may please you. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, our Father, who art in heaven, thou be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptations, and deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much. And so far so good. This moment, we are going to get our scripture reading. And the one who is reading for us. Welcome. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 9. Verse 1 to 12. Deuteronomy 9, 1 to 12. 
Today you are going to cross the river Jordan and occupy the land belonging to nations greater and more powerful than you. Their cities are large, with the walls that reach the sky. The people themselves are tall and strong. They are giants, and you have heard it said that no one can stand against them. But now, you will see for yourselves that the Lord your God will go ahead of you like a raging fire. He will defeat them as you advance, so that you will drive them out and destroy them quickly, as he promised. After the Lord your God has driven them out for, out for you, do not say to yourself that he brought you in to, to possess the land because you deserved it. No. The Lord is going to drive these people out for you because they are wicked. It is not because you are good and you do what is right that the Lord is let, uh, letting you take their land. He will drive them out because they are wicked and because he intends to keep the promise that he made to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can be sure that the Lord is not giving you this fertile land because you deserve it. No, you are a stubborn people. Never forget how you made the Lord your God angry in the desert. From the day that you left Egypt until the day you arrived here, you have rebelled against him. Even at Mount Sinai, you made the Lord angry, angry enough to destroy him. I went up the mountain to receive the stone tablets on which was written the covenant that the Lord had made with you. I stayed there for the days and the nights and it did not eat or drink anything. Then the Lord gave me two stone tablets on which he had written with his own hand what he had said to you from the fire on the day that you were gathered there at the mountain. Yes, after those forty days and the nights, the Lord gave me the two stone tablets on which he had written the covenant. Then the Lord said to me, Go down the mountain at once, because your people whom you led out of Egypt have become corrupt and have done evil. They have already turned away from what I commanded them to do, and they have made an idol for themselves. Their heads are leading, and in the name of the Lord, he glorified. Very clearly, because now let us prepare our hearts to hear from God, uh, receive the word of God mm -hmm. by our minister, uh, Reverend Newton Bogo, and to prepare ourselves, let us rise up and sing him sixty-seven. Pass me not, O gracious Savior.
name is Bobo Newton. I love Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And this morning, I'm so grateful for the doings of the Lord in my life. And I want to thank God for this great opportunity that He has given us to give out the goodness of the Lord by ministering to the whole world this gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to thank God for this opportunity for Eriba Parish. And I know the Lord is together with us and we shall be blessed. Praise the name of God. May we pray. This day and this morning, as you speak to us, we surrender all unto you. And we pray that you may speak to each one of us according to your will and your purposes. And Father, we invite your Holy Spirit that he may continue feeding unto us what you want for us this day. We are just humbled before you. The Lord, you may take charge from now. For we pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our God is a God of love. And that's why this day and this morning, the Lord wants to speak to us the message of victory through God's love. We have been taken through the text from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 9, from verse 1 to 12. And I want to say that every moment that we read through the book of Deuteronomy, it always describes to us of God's love in Israel's past, in the present, or in the present, and also the future plans that God has for them. And therefore, today as we reflect on the victory that we always get through the love of God, it is good to know that God's love goes beyond time, goes beyond place, and goes beyond any circumstance. And this one is very clear from the text. And it is also very clear when we think of why God chose the children of Israel among many other nations. This was driven by God's love for them. And therefore, the book of Deuteronomy, it always explains that love that God had for his people. And I want to say that God was always out to fulfill his covenant, what he had covenanted with our fathers or the fathers of the Israelites. And these are the fathers that we all know, Abraham, Isaac, and also Jacob. In today's message of victory through God's love, I want us to remind ourselves about the love of God. The guiding ones of the call to worship reminded us from the book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8 that anyone who does not love does not go know God because God is love. Praise the Lord. 
And therefore, when we are described, when you are describing the love of God, we should always remember that God's love is expressed through our love to other people. And God is not like love. God is not an example of love. God is love himself. And that is why we say God's love goes beyond every time, every place, every circumstance. It is from everlasting to everlasting. And therefore, this text, it explains that soon Israel were to cross the river Jordan and they were allowed to take possession of the land from people and nations that we are greater and mightier than them. I want us to reflect on this. This was not an easy task that was ahead of the children of Israel. And God had commanded and had given instructions that you are now to pass over the Jordan so that you can take possession of where I promised you. I want to say that we are always faced with such challenges in our lives. And at times we always ponder how possible it may be to go through such situations. And I know even today and this morning, we may be in a situation, all of us, not very sure how we're going to go about it. But I want to say that irrespective of the magnitude and the nature of that challenge, name it, you may be going through a terminal illness, you may be going through diseases and all sorts of infirmities. Today, world over, we are talking of COVID-19. Yet, we are in the bush. We don't know how to go about it. You may be going through a financial challenge. You want to do an investment, you don't have a capital. Your family is going through a turmoil. Your marriage is just about to break. Remember your working place. Your boss is there threatening you. You've been given an unpaid leave. You're wondering how you're going to move aloud and how you're going to overcome this challenge. There is a lot of anxiety. This challenge is too huge for us. It seems insurmountable. But I want to tell you today, God has said you must move forth, cross Jordan, do the unthinkable, praise the name of the Lord. And I want to ask ourselves today, when we are in such a situation, the text from Deuteronomy chapter 9 from verse 1 through verse 12 explains three areas that we ought to know. Three areas that we ought to know. And I want us to go through those areas as we reflect of God's love and the victory he gives us. Number one, verse three reminds us as we take over this challenge, as we cross the Jordan, the Bible says that know therefore this day that he who goes over before you is 
is a defiling fire. Is the Lord, you are God. And I want to say it again. He who has gone before us, some fashion says is a consuming fire. Others say is as a raging fire. And others say that is a defoul is a, as a defiling fire. This is the Lord, you are God. Situations and circumstances may be there ahead of you. Listen to me. They started before you. They started a business before you. They even went to school before you. They even married before you. And they got married before you. Even before you settled where you are settling today, they had settled there many, many years before you. Do I say they are also born before you? And the rest is address. I want to remind you today, when the Lord says that you cross over Jordan, no is a consuming fire that has gone before you. It is not a person who went before you. And it doesn't matter the situation that went before you. The Lord God says, because I have gone before you, I will destroy, I will subdue, I will make them perish quickly. Because this is what he had promised. Know today who has gone before you. Don't be intimidated by any situation. Know God of love has always gone before you. Number two. It is good to know that where you are today is not because of your righteousness. No, it is not because of your righteousness. You know, God was very clear to this nation, the children of Israel, and he told them and he reminded them that it is true you will conquer these nations. You will overcome them. But it is not because you are righteous before me. This explains why God always gives us victory. He reminds them it is because God covenanted with your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What are we saying this morning? Is that they were walking under the framework and the goodwill of the covenant. And I want to remind all of us today that walking under the grace, walking under the blessings of the covenant, it is only made possible through God's love. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, what are we saying to each one of us today? When you move and conquer the world, when you move and you get every achievement and you be where you are today, never boast, never take any pride. May all the glory be back to God. Because God's love will always go beyond even our waywardness because he loved us. This is the greatest gospel we can give to the world. That we must always remember humble before God and always appreciate his doings upon us without taking any glory, without being arrogant, without going out with the self-glorification. What we have, what we are today, is only through God's love. 
I always remember the ones in the book of Lamentation, chapter 3 and verse 22. It says, it is of Lord's mercy that you are not consumed. It is through his compassions that we have not failed. They are always new every morning. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, this morning, remember, when you count the blessings of God, not because you are righteous before God, it is only through God's love we are the way we are. The Israelites were made to know that they will conquer not because of their righteousness. Amen. Amen. And number three, as I finish, you should know you are once a rebellious people. God made it clear to the children of Israel that though you will conquer, though you are advanced, you should always know that once you were a rebellious people. They were to understand where they had come from. Mm. They had come from wickedness. They had come from rebelliousness. They had even made their own graven image, their own metal image, their own molten image, and they had forgotten the true God. We have come a long way, brothers and sisters, friends in the Lord. God's love has always walked with us, and no one, no one deserved that love. It is through God and in his own wisdom that he chose us. Least we forget. He overlooked our wickedness to save us and to bless us. The new covenant, well elaborated in the New Testament, the new covenant in Christ Jesus tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 that Christ took our sins and he became sin that we may become the righteousness of God. What a great love this morning. I want to say that your history may not determine where your future will be. You may have come from a background that is not very right with God. You may have come from a background of rebelliousness, but it is God's desire to bless us and give us his victory. It is God's desire to take us to the next level. Therefore, don't allow yourself to be a slave of the past deeds. Don't allow yourself to be held captive by the wrongs that you did yesterday. Come on, brothers and sisters, let's come out of that. Let's shake our dust and tell God, we yield unto you. Take us to the next level. God comes always to fulfill his promises, his covenant. He is such a faithful God. Because he's filled with love, he is filled with kindness. Think about it as we conclude. Understand today that our victory will always come through God's love. Nothing more, nothing less. He has gone before us and therefore I invite all of us together to be partakers of this God's love. I invite all of us together that we put our trust in God and allow God to take us to the levels that he wants us to be. Our victory comes through God's mercies, love, kindness upon us. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. To you, Lord, we once again commit ourselves. It is true 
that though the children of Israel were to cross over Jordan and take over their possession in the land filled with mightier men and stronger men, it had to take your herd for them to overcome. Bring this one to our conscience that this morning we need you so that we can overcome every challenge ahead of us. Every challenge that may be threatening our lives. We need you, God. We need your love. Help us to love you more and to offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice that is even acceptable and worthy before you. These are prayer of faith through Christ Jesus our Lord. Go with you. 
was we made with you for now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Now, from where we are, we want to wish you God's blessings and remind you that this is the moment to stay safe and be blessed. We welcome our praise, the divas, Kigosha.